All right, sorry about that. Lost track of time. It was okay. All right, let's just wait for the others to log back in. Then I'll continue from the drug chart where we left off. So this session will be the last 40 minute session. Can allergies make you have a cough? Professor, did you hear my question? Hello? Yes. Uh, who's this? Haley. Yeah, what, what about it, Haley? No, I said, can allergies make you have a cough? Okay. Oh, okay. Why, you're positive for corona? I didn't test, but Are I definitely have a call. I mean, paranoid now? Not really. Not yet? Not yet. <laughs> Stay safe, everybody, okay? Um, don't be a... Uh, be hard-headed you're told to stay home just leave the house for supplies or, or whenever you're out avoid um, crowds okay like my wife went out tonight to get groceries and our local target was packed so no that's definitely no more social distancing so avoid um those instances all right yeah um professor yes boss i had a break in with my connection i didn't hear well the drug that you want us to focus on that's okay uh, well continue um, again like i said don't worry everything is recorded so i'm, I'm already uploading the first video um and i'll do the same for the second third and fourth thank you all right okay we've waited long enough now um, i guess the others will just catch up when they return Okay, so let's continue with the drugs. We have, uh, I think we stopped here, Bivrapamil and Daltaizem, and I think I got cut off. Um, you got the Joxin. Okay, so the other drugs are Dijoxin, Atropine, and Adenosine. Adenosine is only used for paroxysmal, uh, no, uh, not just for paroxysmal, but for SVT. Uh, SBT has can be paroxysmal, um, but uh, adenosine is given. Uh, adenosine isn't given in the uh, bedside. It can also be given um, in the ambulance. Um, I'll, I'll show you later. There are uh, drug alerts for this one. And that's it. Okay, between... A fib and A flutter. I'll show you the difference. The PACs. I showed you a picture of the PAC, but I already mentioned that since there's no strip on your textbook, I cannot uh, test you with a strip. PAC. Understand? This is not in your textbook.
All right. Uh, but all the others are uh, in play. Okay, so whatever information you have here, that's testable, especially the causes. Okay. All right. So the next atrial dysrhythmia is, is SVT. SVT, like I said, can be paroxysmal. The only difference between the two is uh, SVT is sustained. Paroxysmal, by the word paroxysmal meaning abrupt it begins abruptly also stops abruptly or suddenly with or without intervention okay so svt is the svt is sustained um, paroxysmal meaning it's it comes and goes you understand the difference yeah all right yeah um there is no um, strip for your SVT. Uh, I'll show you on the other textbook. Again, if it's not shown here, I can't test it. I just want you to see what it looks like. That's a bit. That's better. Okay. So this is SVT. It looks like sinus tack, right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. A here, the A figure looks like uh, S uh, sinus tack actually, but if you measure the waves and complexes, it's not normal. So this is not sinus tachycardia. So if it's no longer measuring normally, then obviously that's not sinus rhythm. That's not sinus tachycardia. This is now SVT. But as you can see, it comes in the same family. Okay. Uh, this one below is. Or what uh, paroxysmal uh, looks like, meaning look at the underlying rhythm here. This one is normal. Okay, this is normal sinus rhythm, but then it, it starts here. You have a uh, SVT here. And then after a while, it goes back again to normal. Okay, so this is paroxysmal, meaning it comes and goes. Okay, so the treatment for that, of course, is adenosine, adenosine okay. um, other non-pharmacologic are vagal maneuvers, meaning this is now the carotid sinus massage. This is now um, uh, treated with that. Uh, there are details here on what to do, what to prepare for when a physician is performing this at the bedside. So there is a danger of um, a more serious dysrhythmia. Which brings me to another concept. Uh, forgive me, I have to go back to chart 34-4. If you look at this chart, look at the drugs I said to read, what do you notice is a common theme under the nursing implications? What do these drugs cause other than the therapeutic effect that you intend for it to do? They cause um, hypotension and bradycardia. Right, meaning they are antidysrhythmics, right? But yet, what, what side effect do they have in common? Right, right. They the heart rate. Right. Bradycardia, yeah. Right, so this is what we call pro-dysrhythmia. Pro, I mean P-R-O. PRO and add dysrhythmia, meaning they are four dysrhythmias. Simply put, one dysrhythmic can cause other dysrhythmia. Do you understand? You broke up for a second. Again, uh, because of what you saw here in chart 34 4, when you're administering these anti dysrhythmics, you should always watch for what? Blood pressure and heart rate other dysrhythmias that could result. Okay. Of course, reflected in your vital signs. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah. All right. So always keep that in mind that when you're administering a anti-dysrhythmic, it may not always work out the way you intend it. 
okay, you may cause another dysrhythmia. A particular drug that comes in mind, in my experience, neodorone. I hate giving neodorone because in all my patients, I don't know if it was me, but all in my experience, all my patients that received amiodarone always developed another dysrhythmia. Although it didn't happen for other nurses, uh, it was maybe it was me. Okay, but um, so in in my experience, I always hated that drug. Yeah. Uh, okay, professor. Yes. Um. It says. Oh. Arrhythmia and dysrhythmia, same thing? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. So, carotid sinus massage, these are your responsibilities here. You should prepare for those. Um, the expected result, of course, is it will return to uh, normal sinus rhythm. Uh, but like I said, whether it's pharmacologic or maneuvers like these performed by a physician, do they always turn out all bright and sunny? No. Because even no. If you look at the complications that could result from the procedure, right? The patient could go uh, into a systole, may develop a, a V-fib, so that's why you need to have this equipment when you're performing. So you have a defibrillator ready, just in case we need. Here's a drug alert for adenosine. Now, adenosine is a very short-acting but a fast-acting drug. It's um, only viable for a few seconds. So, therefore, how should you administer it? Really fast. So, it should be administered quickly, as close to the heart as possible. So, you push it fast, you should also give a flush right behind it. Okay, so here is your um, details for administering adenosine. Um, you should be given uh, rapidly over several seconds, followed by a normal saline flush or a normal saline bolus, meaning it only lasts for a few seconds. It should be given really fast um, because it's a serious antidysrhythmic. So these are your side effects. It will cause a pause, meaning it can lead to a system. So therefore, what equipment should you have uh, available? The defibrillator right. and the uh, resuscitation equipment. Uh -huh. Because it will, uh, it's possible the, the patient's heart may not restart. Okay? Although uh, a short period, a few seconds of systole is expected when you give adenosine. That's what it's supposed to do. It restarts the heart. So it will cause a brief period of assistance, again, it's expected to convert the patient's rhythm back to normal sinus. However, just in case it doesn't happen, it doesn't work out, so you can have emergency equipment available. Is this drug like painful when you uh, give? No, I mean, the patient usually, if not unconscious already, they're semi conscious with, because they're definitely uh, already symptomatic with SVT. Oh, okay. I mean, you saw the what it looked like. I mean, it's it's a non-perfusing rhythm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the patient will be either already in syncope or maybe near syncope already. So they're not totally with it. Okay. All right. Okay. Or we'll discuss cardioversion um, later. Um, take note that synchronized cardioversion is uh, another option to terminate SVT as well as catheter ablation. I'll discuss this later when we get to that section. AFib. This is what AFib looks like. Do you see P waves? No. No. Waves. So are these signals coming from the SA node? No. 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 Okay. So there are two problems in AFib. There are two conditions that will result. One is loss of cardiac output. The second is embolization. Again, because your rhythm looks like this, wherein there is no true atrial contraction, but you have ventricular contractions, 
there are two problems that will result here. One is loss of cardiac output. And because what's causing the loss of cardiac output is there is no true atrial contractions. So is the blood really leaving the atria? No. No. They are not. They're stuck there. And you've already known what will blood do when they hang around too long at any place? Pumping. 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 Blood clots. Because platelets always get attracted to each other. So if they hang around too long in one place, they will clump together and form clots. So that will result in embolization and clotting. Two problems here in AFib. You have to treat the loss of cardiac output as well as treat the clotting that will result. So the drugs listed here in TART 34-4, your options for AFib are the Johnson and then your uh, beta blocker up here. So here indicated for AFib. Um, Gonadolone also will be your uh, option. But on top of that, what will be also given to the patient besides the antidysrhythmics? Something for the embolism. Anticoagulation. Anticoagulation. Very good. And we already finished anticoagulation under um, the respiratory chapter, which will be okay, so I will not discuss uh, anticoagulation again. Okay. All right. Because we already done... Uh, discuss that under um, PE. Okay, so here's an action alert for AFib. Uh, the same goes for A flutter. So it's a high risk for PE. So always watch the patient for that. Is it only a PE though? Can the clot only lodge in the pulmonary artery? No. Where else can that clot end up? The brain. After 45, correct. Remember one of the causes of um, um, embolic stroke? Okay, yeah. Their heart rhythm responsible for that. So if a patient has AFib, uh, they can either have a PE or an embolic stroke. Uh, here are your drugs. Uh, please read this carefully here. So a patient comes in with new AFib. What is your first option? These are, it tells you here exactly what to do. So we will try antidysrhythmics first. And when do you see them using um, cardioversion? Is it a first option? No. We start with antidysrhythmics first. Okay, antidysrhythmics, and then it, it, tell, it tells you here anticoagulation. All right, that's fine. But look at when they now do other interventions. So non-pharmacologic intervention include electric cardioversion. All right, let's explain cardioversion. <clears throat> All right, so you've seen a defibrillator, yeah? Yes. Okay, so let's say this is the machine on the cash crash cart. Okay, so you have the paddles here, okay? Um, this is what you pick up. You pick up these two paddles and then you put it over the patient's chest and then you defibrillate, all right? And this is where the screen is. Somewhere in the bottom, here, in the buttons here, one of these buttons is colored green and it will say S, Y, and C. So it's a sync button. So this is your defibrillator. When you turn on this button here that says sync, this thing becomes a cardioverter. Understand? Yeah. All right, so it's the same machine. The only difference is when used as a defibrillator, 
when you pick up these panels and you put them over the patient's chest and then you press the button, it delivers the electric shock right there. However, if you press this button, you cannot use the panels. It has to be connected to pads because you do not decide when the electrical um, um, when the electric shock is, de is delivered. The machine decides when to deliver the shock. And uh, that is uh, delivered at the peak of an R wave. So that is what we call a synchronized cardioversion. Is that clear? Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. So imagine this is you. You are this patient. And then doctor tells you, all right, let's do um, electrical cardioversion. Okay. So they explain the procedure. And then, uh, would you like to be awake for this? Sure. No. No. When you're not alone, you, you, you'll, you'll, go, you'll say, like, what did you say? It's going to deliver an electric shock with me wide awake? Okay, so is that scary? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Want to be awake for this? No, we said no. Something, you know, between your teeth, just in case you you crap yourself or you knock your teeth out because of the pain of the electric shock. No. So, therefore, what do you need to administer to the patient? Okay, a short-acting anesthetic agent for sedation. Is that clear? Yes. All right, so of course the patient needs consent because I mean it's a scary procedure. Plus, there's always um, light threatening dyspnea um, side effects here. So the patient uh, will be given, um, you know, after they sign consent, they'll be given a short anesthetic agent um, just for sedation. Okay, so that it's it's a little bit comfortable, you know, well, relatively com comfortable rather than uh, you being awake and you know really scary. But regardless if it's defibrillation or cardioversion, what do you need to shout before you press that button? Clear. 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 Everything, Clear. everybody is, is safe, okay? All right, so that's all what cardioversion is. Um, this procedure here, I will not test. Have you heard of um, Watchman commercial on TV? This one, Watchman? No, no. Um, that's okay. So we'll discuss that maybe another time. This is um, okay. I'll discuss it for a few seconds. This is um, a surgical procedure that they'll they'll close this corner here. This is a um, a corner found in the left uh, atrium. Okay. So inside the left atrium, I would say this is the um, left or right corner, which is the most common site of the blood clot formation. So they just, uh, somebody mute that, please. Uh, so this is since this is the most common site of the blood clot, so they will surgically close this area, and that is what the watchman is. Okay, it's a it's a non pharmacologic. Um, uh, option meaning if let's say the patients always get a bleeding because of the anticoagulants because they have AFib, so this is an option. Okay, uh, ablation. Uh, ablation is done in the cath lab, so this is radio frequency catheter ablation. So uh, before they can do this, though, for AFib, they have to take the patient down to EPS. EPS stands for electrophysiologic study. So they will map out where the signals are coming from. You saw these waves right here on uh, AFib. The ones causing these, these are not P waves. Okay, these are these signals here causing these fibrillatory waves are coming somewhere in the atria. So the EPS is done to find these guys to find where, what's, what's causing these electrical impulses, okay? Where are they coming from? So we can only do that with an EPS. So the, the doctor performs an EPS first, 
right here, EPS. And then once they find them, then they'll proceed with burning those areas. So once found, they will literally burn them. They'll destroy them. And hopefully there is, you know, it will stop the, those um, um, F waves from being formed. And the patient goes back to normal sinus rhythm. Here's a one uh, warning. A, um, ablation cannot be uh, done if long-term anticoagulation is contraindicated. Uh, we will skip biventricular pacing. This is advanced um, ICU stuff. So we'll also skip the other surgical interventions. We'll only stay with um, cardioversion and catheter ablation. Uh, please read this on your own. This is another best practice uh, chart because um, most of our patients are older adults. Uh, they're not really anything different. Okay? These are just focusing on the needs of the elderly uh, because they're the ones, again, that uh, this is the largest population experiencing this redness. Uh, most of them are AFib. AFib is the most commonly occurring dysrhythmia, uh, especially in the older population. So most of us here uh, might develop AFib. As we see. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, we're still on atrial dysrhythmias, okay? We still have to go through, um, but uh, we should go faster because, again, you just simply repeat um, the pattern. Uh, here's another teaching chart, 34-6. Uh, please do it on your own. They're self-explanatory. Let's begin ventricular dysrhythmias. Uh, there are four. We have PVCs, uh, VTAC, VFib, and asystole. What do we need to learn again for each dysrhythmia? Silence and symptoms. Okay, Re recognize it first, look at the causes, look at the signs and symptoms, interventions. Is that clear? Clear. Interventions, yes. yeah, interventions again involve pharmacologic, so you go back to chart 34-4 for the treatment for each one. So I'll go faster with this one. PBCs, um, like I mentioned earlier, you only those, these two. If you don't have any strips for bigeminy, trigeminy, or quadrigeminy, so I can only test these two. This is unifocal. Unifocal because they look the same. That means they're coming from the same source. Multifocal, these two obviously don't look the same, so they have two different causes. These are the possible causes of PBCs. Coffee again, another hit here. Again, coffee drinkers, you might want to really consider that. Uh, go find another vice. Um, here's a uh, action alert. This is related to chapter 38. During the MI, when you see PVCs, is that good or bad? Anybody? That's bad. <laughs> bad. Warning sign. Right. So when the patient is admitted for an MI and then they start developing PBCs, which are, of course, that's ventricular irritability, that's a warning. Okay. So what could possibly happen in the next few minutes? The patient AFib. or VFib. Okay. A so, VFib, uh, yeah, VFib, right. So in MI, that is not good. Here. In any other patient, let's say you and me with no cardiac history, uh, PVCs, as stated here, PVCs are usually not treated. All right, so we just eliminate the cause, you know, uh, stop that coffee or, um, you know, um, de stress. All right, uh, it tells us here we have 10 minutes left. Right. Um, that's plenty of time. VTAC. There are two types of VTAC. So you, therefore, um, what is your first action? Because a VTAC can either be a VTAC with a pulse or VTAC without a pulse. So what is your first action when you see this? What should you do first? 
Assess. Assess for what? Pulse. Assess for a pulse because the treatment will be light and day, will be night and day. Again, VTAC can either be VTAC with a pulse or a pulseless VTAC. If there is a pulse, the treatment is different. If it's a pulseless VTAC, then we treat the patient just like we do with VFib, is CTR and ACLS. All right, so it only makes sense that when you see the patient in this rhythm, what is your first action again? Check for pulse. Test the pulse. Patient for a pulse. If there's a pulse, what do we do? What this? What does chart thirty four dash four say? If there's a pulse. What drug do you administer? Um, beta blockers. No. Dijoxin, altropin, sulfate, adenosin. Okay, make sure it's best there for uh, VTAC, okay? Because you may be looking at a pulseless VTAC. Okay. Um, of course, if the patient is pulseless, then we do CPR uh, and then uh, ACLS. And, and uh, this textbook, uh, of course, ACLS requires additional certification, so we will not test ACS guidelines. Clear? Yes. All right, very good. VFib, we already uh, talked about the management. VFib is the same management as pulseless VTAC, so it's uh, CPR and um, ACLS. So this is what VFib looks like this is most disorganized rhythm, at least with VTAC here. This is uh, more or less, you know, regular, although there are variations. But again, you don't have ex experience with the variations, so I can only use the strips that your textbook uses. Um, and this, of course, is uh, VFib. Um, we already did the uh, management, which is what do you do first? Hello. Can you repeat? Uh, checking for the pulse. Well, this is VFib. Of course, there's oh. this is not going to be pulse. I mean, you know, I mean, um, do you? Right. Yeah. So you have chest compressions, right? Yes. Yeah. Compressions, but of course, we're looking for CPR, BLS. You learn that we always check for a pulse anyway, right? Mm -hmm. and you right. And then finding none, you say, hey, you call everyone or call a uh, code, right? And then test compressions until help comes and then they'll do the fibrillation. Uh, again, ACLS will not be tested because we are not ACLS certified. Ventricular, do you shock this rhythm? We calculate a systole. This is the uh, rhythm. I mean, there's there's nothing. Okay. I mean, this is a flat line. Yeah. So, what do you do for ventricular systole? Do you defibrillate? No. No, because there is no rhythm. Is this what you give the meds? I'm sorry. I know you said one of them you shock them, and then the other one I think you said you give medication. Uh, okay. Let's get this out of the way now. There are only two shockable rhythms. So we mentioned defibrillation only during pulseless VTAC and ventricular fibrillation. It's not mentioned here in asystole. Okay, so please do not go shocking defibrillating patients in asystole. Okay? Yeah, I know. All right. So what are the only two rhythms we shock or defibrillate? Hello. Pulse plus attack. And ventricular fibrillation. Assisting you, all you can do is chest compressions. And of course, ACLS drugs. Not tested. And here is your um, CPR. Okay. Um, 
you are all BLS certified, so I will test BLS. Clear? Yes. Clear. Right. Just to see whether or not you really did CPR or just you, you just paid for your uh, certification. Yeah. These are possible complications of chest compressions. And uh, here, here's a warning. Do not defibrillate uh, ventricular systole. Uh, AED, you're already expected to know because that is part of your BLS. And then lastly is ICD. Uh, ICD is, um, thank you for reading, Miss Lauren. The implantable cardioverta defibrillator is indicated for patients who have experienced one or more episodes of spontaneous sustained ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation not no. caused by MI. All right. Collaborate Very with the... Uh -huh. Okay. So this is an implantable uh, defibrillator. So yes, it's small. Does it deliver really strong electrical shocks? No. No, no, no. Things just the same. So if this is going off, of course, you don't want to touch the patient. Uh, sometimes they malfunction and fire. Um, here is your patient teaching. Please read, especially not only here. This resembles pacemaker. Uh, it's it's almost identical, and that's what we do for uh, patients with a um, a pacemaker. Uh, but take note on what to do when it fires. Okay, so know what to do. So here, if it if it discharges, what should you do? Lay down immediately. Lie down because there's a reason why it fired. It's programmed to fire when it detects a dysrhythmia. Okay, so it said here what was the indication? The patient may have had what dysrhythmias, meaning what are indications for a um, ICD? Um, VTAC or V or VFib. Right here, sustained ventricular tachycardia or VFib, and then they survived it, okay? Meaning uh, they, they're given an ICD because what if this, this occurs again and they're not anywhere close to an ambulance or a hospital, okay? So this is a lifesaver, so the, the device will shock them uh, until help arrives, right? So very important on what to do. And that's it for 34. Any questions? So this chapter is included for exam four? Exam three. Exam three. Oh my God. This is an exam three? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We don't have. So the specific, for... the specific chapters for exam three and the details, uh, will you be able to send that for us on Jupiter? I already gave you the blueprint, sir. <laughs> okay. All I right. double check. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember reading this on the blueprint. I don't know for some reason. I double check my file. Yeah, it's on the blueprint. Um, since we do we did not have time to finish heart blocks, so we will skip the heart blocks for this exam. Okay. Okay. All right. If you have questions, um, I'll be available. Or start. I'll start. This one's about to. Start. So this is it, right, Professor? This yep. finishes the 